All right, everybody, I'm going to do a little bit from 2009 BC6. Um, I did some of it in class yesterday. Um, if you want to check out that video from the from the beginning of it, and we ran short on time, and um, there was a couple parts that people are still asking about. So um, if you uh, forgot what it's asking, um, part A asks you to find a Taylor series for this. And you can just take the argument and substitute it into the Taylor series for E. And then letter B asks you to find this Taylor series for f of x, which involves this, this part, part A. And so that purple box represents this series here. And that is the Taylor series for E, but the argument is changed. And then it's got this extra, you know, minus one hanging out, which is kind of weird at first, but that's where that comes in. And the reason that comes in is because the uh, the purple series, this this series in here, has a 1 in it. And when we subtract 1, those 1s, those constants, actually cancel each other out. Then we take, uh, or then we took, uh, you know, this down here means we're going to divide every term by x minus 1 uh, to the second power. And so because we have pluses, um, you know, each term we can apply an exponent rule and essentially uh, simplify the exponent. And if you do that all correctly, you end up getting an approximation for uh, f of x, which was the question, in simplified form um, right here. If you haven't tried that on your own, I would encourage you because there's, there's a lot of value in, in understanding the notation and where some of this stuff comes from. All right, what we didn't talk about is part C, and I've had a few of you ask me about this. And so um, even though that this, this idea of the interval of convergence isn't a unit that's on this year's test, um, I'm still going to go over it because it can only make you stronger for what is on the test. And it um, interval convergence questions always um, use the ratio test. And the ratio test is on your exam. It's just not quite in this context. And so um, I'm just going to answer this question, and, and I think a lot of you guys will benefit from it. So um, the ratio test, if you forgot, is to determine if a, uh, a series converges using a ratio of consecutive terms. And what it says is if the limit as n approaches infinity of a to the n plus 1 over a to the n. This is general term, general nth term, n plus 1th term. If that limit is less than 1, it converges. And if it's uh, greater than 1, it diverges. And if it's equal to 1, you're out of luck. And uh, anytime you, you have a factorial that represents the nth term, you want to use the ratio test. And uh, if it's asking for the interval of convergence for f of x, we're going to use this nth term um, to, f to find the interval of convergence. The difference, uh, one, one very large difference, is that the ones that you're going to do with just series, there's no x's in there. Um, but because we're representing terms, these have x's hinting on the, the conclusion for interval convergence is a little bit different. Anyway, I'm, I'm stumbling over my words. So um, limit as n approaches infinity... I'm going to take this uh, general term and I'm going to plug in n plus 1 and then we have essentially n plus 1 plus 1 and then on the bottom we have the nth term. So I've done a few examples of these. There's a YouTube video or two out there with this but the initial setup looks like this. Before I take the limit, though, I'm going to clean it up quite a bit. So uh, the notation's good for you. The notation is on the test. The ratio test is on there. It's just this idea of interval convergence. The conclusion's a little bit different. Um, what I encourage you to do is rewrite this um, by multiplying by the reciprocal. So n plus 1 plus 1 is n plus 2. And then if I, um, again, multiply by the reciprocal to get rid of the complex fraction, I end up getting this, and you can pause it and verify it. I think I'm doing it right. Uh, no, I'm doing it right. 
limit as n approaches infinity. And then uh, this is the part that usually throws some people off. Um, I'm going to end up with an x minus 1 squared on the top. And that's what happens when I simplify these guys. Think about it as if this is, has 2n of them, this has 2 more. So when you simplify that, you're going to be left with you know, 2 on the top. The factorials I'm also going to simplify. A um, little side note, you know, n plus 2 uh, factorial would be n plus 2 times n plus 1 times n times n minus 1. You can think of it like that. If you think of it like that, the n plus 1s will cancel out, and you'll be left with just an n plus 2. So now I'm down to that. So here's, here's kind of where the conclusion comes in and where it gets a little bit weird. Um, what you haven't seen yet, unless you've studied on your own, is that this limit as n approaches infinity only affects the n, but there's an x in the expression. And you have to treat the x as though um, it's a constant, which is weird, in terms of the limit. And so one thing that I encourage students to think about is, you know, the, the x minus 2 squared does not play a role um, in finding the limit. So you can essentially almost pull it out of the limit. Right, because the limit of a constant is the constant. Right, the limit uh, as you know, n approaches, who cares, of 4, I shouldn't have used 4, of 10, is just 10. And so you could think of that x um, as, as, as a constant. But this limit, you know, 1 over infinity, in our class, that limit goes to 0. So what you really have is this 0 times x minus 1 squared. So what in the world is, 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 is this asking? Interval convergence. Well, the ratio test says that if the limit is less than 1, then it converges. But this conclusion, 0 times whatever x is in here, pick a value of x, any number you want. You times that number by 0, and it's going to be 0. And 0 is always less than 1. And so the answer to this question is, is, you know, that all values of x converge. Um, because no, no matter what you plug in here, the ratio test is true. And so there have been questions that say, you know, find the values of x where it converges. But when it asks specifically for an interval of convergence, you want to write an interval. But if all values converge, then that interval is every number. And so the interval of convergence for this particular example would be negative infinity to infinity, because that includes every possible number. Um, maybe you find it cool. Um, we will do one, or I'll find one for those of you that are curious do it in class or post a little video but um, it won't always converge for everything but if, if it if it uh, let's say uh, I'll just go on a little side note here real quick if you're curious let's say at the very end you had um, you know x minus 1 that you that you factored out and then you took the limit as n approaches infinity but maybe your limit was this good review of limits. So let's say you did this whole long question and this is what you're left with. Well, this limit right here, hopefully you see is one third. So then you'd have a one third and you'd have, you know, some X quantity left over. And the ratio test says it converges if it's less than one. And so to find a quote-unquote interval of convergence, you would take this 
leftovers that has an X in it. And this is an inequality. It represents an interval. Meaning you could solve this inequality, meaning multiply both sides by 3. Use what you know about uh, inequalities over the years and solve and find an uh, find an interval negative 2 to 4 this right here is an interval and it's it's the x values that converge given you know this made up example and so that that's what the interval of convergence is um, there's a couple other little details. Again, this is kind of a uh, crazy concept at the end of a calculus course. But um, things to think about, things you're not going to be tested on this year. But I, I think a lot of you uh, can totally handle it. So thanks for watching.